Um, my name is Hannah Ashley and I did the Wankel engine and it's also known as the rotary engine. So some common places you'll find one is in like old 70s snowmobiles and some older motorcycles and stuff like that. You'll also see it in some airplanes and like little tiny speedboats. But I bet the most common place everybody has maybe heard of the Wankel engine is in the Mazda R. X7s and Mazda RX8s, which was the RX8 was the last one to be manufactured in 2012. So, but now Mazda has not gone back to the rotary engine. So we'll see. They keep talking about it, but so far nothing's happened. Okay, I, I discussed this one time during the table talk, but their Audi Audi is using the Wankel engine for their A1 e-tron. And so they're not using it for actual power production in their engine. It's just using it to increase the range of their vehicle. Um, you can't really hear it, unlike the RX-7, it's really small. And you can like go on the shifter and just do like extended range and it will kick in. Um, yeah. And so this is the general setup of a Wankel engine. So you'll have the inlet right there at one and the exhaust goes out at two on the bottom and then you have the housing which is the yellow that goes around it and the combustion chambers is each of the fours where each of the parts of the cycle happen the rotor is the chip looking thing so this triangle and the internal gear is stationary so this is right here so the um or this but this is what we call it. So those teeth rotate around the eccentric shaft, which in turn rotates the wheels and you know makes power for the engine. Um, and on these eccentric shafts, they have like offset loads. So there's actually for every one cycle of a rotary engine, for the one cycle of Dorito, there's three <laughs> turns of the eccentric shaft. And there's actually two spark plugs in the rotary engine. So, because of how long the combustion is. So this is another look at how it's set up. Um, you can see the eccentric shaft over here, how they have two offset loads. And the, um, there's actually oil that is put in the top of the engine that lubricates it as it goes around. And it's very inefficient because of how much oil is used. And also there are apex seals on each of the on the rotors and that allows for like each of the combustion sections to be contained so they don't leak into one another. One another, one another. So, and there's usually two rotors for each uh, rotor engine. Um, so this is how the cycle works. It's similar to an auto cycle. So you'll have the intake, the compression, the power exhaust. So um, a vacuum is created with the intake and then it compresses the um, air fuel mixture and then the two spark plugs ignite it and then it's pushed out through the exhaust. Okay, so this is a little video that I found um, just like kind of showing you the process and how the combustion works. Probably like, click. Okay, maybe. Here. Okay, maybe it's not going to work. Yeah, okay, it's not going to work. But anyway, you can kind of see it. It's like the fire, the fire for the combustion right there. And then the intake for this one's down here and it goes like this and pushes out. And so on this one, it's actually really, you can see it well because it expels like black smoke. So, but anyway. Oh, that's it. So you can kind of see, look up at the top as it goes through like right here, you can kind of see the black. Expelled out. It's kind of hard to see in the dark. But. Okay, so some benefits of a, of a Wankel rotary engine. Um, they're smooth and quiet. The, there's counterweights that dampen the vibration. And they're pretty reliable because of how low, there's a low amount of moving parts within it. Um, and it also reduces the cost of replacing those parts that, if they were to break. And there's also a lower chance of valve float at high RPMs. And slower internal movement puts the parts under less strain, unless you mess with it and that's bad. 
but and it's also really small but powerful. That's why they put it in like those smaller little speedboats and stuff like that. And so there's some comparisons in this chart. So like the 2004 RX-8 versus the GTIs and the Corvettes the same year. So um, the size of the engine, the Wankel is obviously the smallest with 1.3. You can just compare it to the Corvette, I guess. I actually look at the GTI. So it has a 1.8 liter engine and this weighs more, um, but, and also look at the gas mileage, it's horrible. So, but the comparison, they're pretty similar, but this still has more power in the engine. And even the Corvette, the Corvette weighs more and um, it has a really big engine and it has like a hundred more horsepower. So it's pretty comparable to it, especially with the miles per gallon. So some drawbacks, so this is why it isn't in use anymore, really. So it burns a lot of oil and you have, it uses a lot to lubricate it. So it's not really efficient with oil. You have to like replace the oil a lot in it and add more. And also the really, the biggest issue with it is the sealing challenge. So like the apex seals that are these right here on each of the edges, they have a tendency to blow and just, you know, start mixing each of the compartments. And so when that happens, misfiring can happen, power reduction, bad idle, hard to start, and the chambers bleed into one, and one another, which in turn reduces the efficiency. And so because of the large chambers, there's a tendency that a portion of the fuel mixture will not get burned, and that results in the spitting of flames out the back. And it also has a low gas mileage as a result because not all the fuel gets burned. And so in turn, low thermal efficiency. And one of the downfalls of the RX-8, why they don't have it in production, is because it couldn't meet the European standards. So no sales in Europe, only sales in the US is not worth it to cost it. Okay, what's next for the rotary engine? Mazda says they're gonna implement it into the hybrid vehicle. Um, and also, but that's yet to be seen. So they keep saying it, but nothing happens. And it also works well with hydrogen fuels. So because of the long, longer intake period, it's efficient for mixing the air and the fuel, and higher quantities of hydrogen can be ejected through the correct air fuel mix. Interesting. Yeah, can you go to the slides? Yeah, yeah. No, just go forward. No, no, forward. Yeah. And in principle, you guys are making your slide. You should always try to put slide numbers. So it's very easy for me to just tell you to go to your first class slide. Yeah, RX, it could not meet Euro blah, 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 emission regulation. Like, what really happened? Like, why could you not meet the uh, emission regulation? Because of its, like, fuel, how much it burns, and the fact that it burns oil pretty much. Yeah. Like, its emissions were way too high for it to meet the European regulations. Yeah, and you, you pretty much said it. the reason why it won't be able to meet it is because of the point of oil, of oil. Since oil is actually very, very high, you need a lot of air to pump oil. And if you have those small air, definitely you are going to get some products that you don't want. Yeah, I guess that's why the engine is not much in use. Yeah. So, so the oil is basically just kind of like sprayed and smeared around inside the actual. It's like in the top. So so it's supposed to lubricate the edges. You can see those okay, edges. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And then, since it's part of the, since it's also inside the chamber, some of them can actually go to the control chamber as well. can actually get burnt. And the ones that happen yeah. get bad uh, emission. Yeah. So, uh, what would have to change about the rotary engine in order to make it uh, more passable for cars? Um, I definitely think it would have to have better fuel efficiency. And you have to figure out how to lubricate it better because the oil is just, just if you mess up with the oil, your whole engine is toast. Like you can't mess up once because it's kind of unrecoverable in some cases. So I guess the whole idea is to work with another kind of lubrication system. Have you guys heard of the magnetic form of lubrication system? Have you guys have anything we have about it? We have you know, definitely, if two opposite, sorry, if two same poles are together, what happens? They repel, right? Yes, what if we kind of make this 
to make the, 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 this, tri this uh, triangular shape stuff kind of repel the outer casing. It's like, is okay. it going to be in terms of uh, lubrication? Or what is that cause gaps between the chambers? Like the, the gaps between, hmm, that's true. Because you have to physically seal and make a boundary between these chambers. Now, if you have a magnetic propulsion, there will be a gap. Yeah, yeah, sometimes the gap might be actually very, very small. Like, I'm, I'm sure you guys are, are uh, out of mag, uh, like maglev trains, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. magnetic uh, lift. Uh, <coughs> do you know that they actually forget it? Is? Yeah. But it's very, 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 like the spacing is very, 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 very small. So I don't know if maybe they can apply it here uh, just to just get around this uh, oil kind of lubrication. But if guys are doing it, we just tell this company who knows you might end up getting a, a grant or getting something. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, so that should be all. Yeah, you guys ready to learn about the